Western Conference Podcast, and we are back, baby, back in studio. Hope you guys enjoyed those Welcome to Jam Rock Cruise episodes. But you know, when I say we got a special guest, I'm telling y'all we got a special guest. I always open up with that. But in studio today, we got my brother in town for Pro Bowl, by the way. I'm going to not say that just lightly. Pro Bowl safety, Mr. Talanoa Hufanga. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing Great man, this is awesome. This is crazy man, this is crazy. <laughs> I saw the intro and everything. See, we had the intro wild. going on. It's we got it. We got the USC. <laughs> we got the Niner thing going on. But how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Can't yeah. complain. Just you know, blessed to be out here. Uh, man, great season. Yeah. And life too. You know, just everything's just been going smooth. And then being out here in Vegas for the first time. Yeah. Uh, it's been. Uh, and that's cool what I was clean. tripping. This is your first time. So you came here to play the Raiders, and but that was a work trip. Yeah, yeah. That this is like the trip. Like you a Pro Bowl athlete. In Vegas, representing the San Francisco 49ers. And we I had to take them out last night. Shout out my brother DJ Franzen. <laughs> shout out Dre's. Shout out Dustin Dre as well, man. They took care of us. But how do you like it out here, man? Just enjoying the life. Man, the experience is incredible. Like it's just the vibe is different. It's, yeah. it's different when you come in for a work trip because you know we stay yeah. away from the away from the Oh, strip. they put you guys down by the lake. It's, it's <laughs> far. Like we, we know we're close to casinos. You yeah, yeah. Find nothing Take away you from all the temptation. Yes, yeah. exactly. So uh being here to enjoy it with you guys yeah. and my family here too. Yeah, so, man. Uh, being able to do all those things is pretty dope. So. But it, this has happened so quick in your career. I mean, just to let everybody know, you guys know how diehard of a Niner fan I am. So I'm real mm -hmm. critical when it comes to our team and, you know, what happened. And I really don't want to talk about what happened, but we'll get into some of that. But how does it feel to represent such an early stage of your career? Like, you're just in your a couple of years and you're already a pro bowler. Uh, you know, you just got to trust the process. And nowhere yeah. am I close to even doing what I want to accomplish uh, and have a lot of strides of, of mistakes that I've made that yeah. i got to continue to fix. Uh, but that's part of the process. And, you know, there's things that I, I would love to take back in terms of how this play worked, this yeah. play didn't. Uh, but in year two, you know, I've learned so much from year one, uh, the growth and the mistakes that I've made that continue just to get over the hump each and every day. And so when you put those steps and you build those bricks each each day, yeah. uh, you know, you can get a pretty good castle at the end of the day. So Not a lot of people could say in their second year of being in the NFL they made the Pro Bowl. Like, this is a big deal. Like, do you understand, like, the, the magnitude of this? Because you representing San Francisco 49ers to the fullest, but you being here in your second year, that's huge for you. Yeah, no, nah, it's uh, I give all the glory to God, you yeah. know, first and foremost, and you know my coaches and uh, my teammates. Yeah, like we, it wasn't easy. Like we had those long days yeah. of training, all those meetings. You know, everybody thinks that it's just show up and see you on Sunday. No, you definitely got to put the work in. It's 365 days. Yeah. It's a 12 round fight, and so you start right at when the season ends. It's it's right back to it. Yeah, and understanding how you do this. So you know, my first year. Uh, coming out in the draft, like I've never had a longer rookie year. Yeah. That's what they always say. You're gonna hit the rookie wall, and I definitely hit it. Yeah. And that's where I was like, man, how can I get over that hump a little bit more? And I'm still trying to guide through that. But man, being a Pro Bowler in my second year is just, it's wild. You know, obviously, yeah. you know, we want to be a Super Bowler, absolutely, you know, in, in any way possible. And so we just gotta continue to fight for that. But uh, definitely, truly blessed for this. And sure. the blessing definitely coming your way because I got to tell you guys a story. I met Talanoa. We were at the Cali Roots Festival that I do out there in Monterey. Common Kings were there. And, you know, Talanoa was able to walk around. He was a rookie. Now it's not going to be as easy for you to walk around as it was last year, right? <laughs> no, I remember I was over here at the meet and greet, you know, Common yeah. Kings and stuff. And I was like, dang, this is crazy. Like, oh, yeah. this is wild. Like, this was beyond my expectations. And then now it's like starting to happen to me. I'm yeah. like, oh, man, it's cool. And it's wild, crazy though. because I told Talanoa to come on stage. You know, um, we were dancing and stuff. You know how we do what we do. And I'm just saying, we can't do it this year. I said, <laughs> but now you got to have security with you. But how does that feel to kind of say go from one year of not being as noticed to now it's like you get stopped every five minutes. Says, hey, you know, throwing up the T's and all that. Uh, you know, it's, it's a... It's a blessing, you yeah. know, at the same time, you know, and I never thought I would be in this spot, like, if I'm being truthful. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I have a great support system around me, great family, great great lady as well, just yeah. to continue to keep me straight, you know, and it's yeah. like all the temptations and, you know, being in the fame and the limelight, you know, I got a lot of people that continue to help me just strive to be my best every single day. So It does take a village. I mean, you definitely have to have the support system. And that kind of takes me back to what we were just talking about, throwing up the tees. Yep. Um, before we get into how this all came about, Tease, like you're, you're holding almost a whole culture on your shoulders as well. Like, tell me the pressures of being a Polynesian athlete in the NFL. You know, you once you threw up them tees, it was over. <laughs> because now every, you got everybody do. You got from Nick Bosa doing it. You got all your teammates doing it. <laughs> and then when you see people from the other teams and they're they greeting you, they're throwing it up. So mm -hmm. tell us how that was evolved for you as being a Polynesian and being a Tongan football player. Um, man, you know, obviously I'm, you know, I'm half Tongan. Yeah. Um, 
my mom was raised from Oregon. That's where I'm from. Yeah. Uh, so it was a little bit different upbringing in terms of the community I was in. Absolutely. But my dad always kept her like kept making sure my roots were still attached. Yeah. And so, you know, I was really raised like like a Tongan in terms of like the respect, the the order of the household, understanding what goes on within that value system. Yeah. Uh, so when I was able to take that transitioning from my, my upbringing to my older life in terms of college mm -hmm. and going to the league, um, you know, my Tongans, like the Tongan community around me and the Polynesian c culture, yeah. uh, I really wanted to be proud of it and, yeah. and continue to throw it up, to throw the tees and try to bring as much awareness to it, you know, so because uh, not a lot of people see it. You yeah. know, it's, it's really like the community kind of just. It's here, it's off to the base. Oh, yeah. you see somebody that's big and poly, they're like, yeah. oh, man, like. <laughs> they already have their own assumptions at like, that point. They're yeah. like, what are you? You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like I really wanted to try to put us on the map in any way, shape, or form. So, I, you know, in high school, I really started throwing the tees up just a little bit. Yeah. And then as I got to college, I threw it up a little more. And then when I went to the NFL, I was like, man, I'm going to make this, like, this is my thing. Yeah. Like, and I, and I, it, in no way was I the first person to throw the tees oh, Absolutely, up. yeah, yeah. But uh, well, you put it on a worldwide stage, I just put I, it that <laughs> way. <laughs> I, I just tried to use my platform for yeah. sure. So, um Having the people around me and my teammates, um, it's really just, it's pretty crazy when you see Fred Warner throwing it up. Yeah, also, come on. Uh, Kittle, and it's just like having their, like knowing that they have my back is just, it's pretty special. And just to have like younger Polynesian kids, seeing mm -hmm. people like Kittle, seeing people like Fred Warner throw up the tees and, you know, being proud of, of their heritage and their culture. When I say put pressure on you, it's just because, you know, in, in our demographic, and I, and I tell you guys all the time, where our culture is real, real microscopic, where they put you under the microscope. Mm -hmm. So when you when you are representing Tonga, when you are representing Samoa, any of the Polynesian islands, you do have the weight of you really can't make any mistakes at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, tell me how that pressure kind of affects you when you're kind of like saying, okay, I got to start watching what I'm doing all the time. Um, you know, I've had some scenarios where it's just like, oh, you got to make sure you, yeah. you're on your ten toes and making sure you're watching yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, I've always lived my life like that. Absolutely. You know, growing up, it was, I never liked to get in trouble with my mom or dad. Like, yeah. And not even in school. Like, I'll come home crying if I got, you know, they used to do this marriage system where it was a green, a yellow, and a red. Yeah. And so the green means you were good as a good student. I'm talking like first, second grade. You were a good student all yeah. day. And say you talking too much in class, they tell you, oh, go move it to the yellow. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you if you do really bad on this, oh, you in the red, and, 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 you, yeah. and you really, I was in the red the all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with the, <laughs> it was a red guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm the red guy, everybody. Hey. <laughs> well, I get mad just at, like I've, I think I only moved it one time in yeah. my life to the yellow, and that yellow like broke me down. Like, yeah. and it was like one of those things I just never liked to make mistakes. So I was always competitive in the classroom, competitive against myself, and so it kind of it makes this pressure that I have of doing all the right things all yeah. the time. Um, it's not as big as it seems for, say, you know, my grandma looking in on yeah. me. She's like, oh, there's so much pressure on you. No, it's just like, this is how I live my life. Yeah. Like, this is what I love to do. Uh, and I love to live my life in a godly manner. So it's always those things that I try to do uh, at the best of my ability. And and, I, and it takes us back to the Polynesian heritage because we're so family oriented. We're yeah. so, you know, into God and everything. I mean, it's stuff that we should be into, but now on a worldwide stage, you know, it's it's kind of like times 10. So that's why <laughs> I, I, what I love about you is that you take that and run it in stride and you're only in your second year. So like, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take us back to Oregon when you did start playing football. Take us back to that. Ooh, uh... Well, before I actually started playing, I yeah. was always playing in the street. You know, I still remember. We actually lived on a half cul-de-sac. So what, what part of Oregon for the Oregon people out there? Well, okay, so for Oregon people that would know, I'm from Albany, okay. a small town uh, right next to Corvallis. For the people that Got don't it. know, I always say I'm from Corvallis uh, just because that's where I went to high school. Yeah, uh, It's where Oregon State University is at, so it's kind of like I'm, I'm in between both in the country. Yeah. Uh, grew up on a farm, but originally I grew up in a half cul-de-sac at the beginning, and that's where my football really started. Oh, that's uh, what all started. That little cul-de-sac right there. That the was the field. Stack. It was yeah. the field. It was everything. And it's actually funny. So my dad, he's originally he's from he's from Tonga. And yeah. then when he moved to the uh the mainland, he, he moved to San Diego. And so he was a San Diego Charger fan yeah. and a USC Trojan fan. So wow. that's that's kind of how that connection started. And you know, he was big on rugby, so he didn't know football. Yeah. But he understood like, okay, these are the two big teams out here in the South in, yeah. in the Southern California. So uh when I got to the decision of making me going to school and stuff, yeah. I was like, I can't go to school at the Chargers, so I have to go to USC. So like that's so why. Yeah, so yeah, so I was a give back to pops. So that, yeah, so yeah. I was like, I had I had to go there, and that's what I loved about it. But getting into that space, I still remember watching the Chargers growing up. Yeah, and it so was, was that like, your team growing up? Uh, it wasn't like my team it was just yeah. like it was like whatever my dad was watching. Yeah. Like we watched the Niners, we watched the Cowboys, we watched the Chargers. But Chargers, I still remember he had the Charger shirts. Yeah. I had the Niners shirts growing up. Yeah, with my dad oh yeah, we seen that. Chargers. We seen pictures of that. Yeah, yeah. so that's like that's how it was. 
Uh, but we had a Chargers football. I still remember. We would always go out into the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And we'd start playing. we just throw catch and everything. And, and there was little, like, the, the eight-year-olds and the, the nine-year-olds had practice at the end of the cul-de-sac on the, on the uh, park nearby. Yeah. And so we would be looking over there, and, like, I'm watching. I'm like, dang, like, these are, like, I'm just a little bit younger. I was probably, like, four or five years yeah. old. And I'm like, man, I really want to play that, you know. That'd be really fun one day. And then as we moved out of that uh, into the countryside, and mm -hmm. that's where I grew up on a farm and stuff, uh, that's when I decided to uh, get into football. My parents would allow me to play. So in third well, grade. Well, don't leave the farm yet. Don't leave the farm yet. When you say grow up on a farm, that would make anybody say, I need to go play football to get off this farm. What, do we, <laughs> we, was we milking cows? What was we doing on the farm? Uh, nah, because we had beef cows. Okay. And so we uh, obviously, you know, it's for. I like how T said we had beef cows. Like, all I know from beef cows is steak. Because it was steaks. <laughs> well, there's, dairy, there's dairy cows too. We didn't have oh, the dairy, so dairy cows. Oh, dairy cows and beef cows. Ah, yeah, okay. So see, have, learn something new every we day. We didn't have the dairy cows. We didn't Got do it, it for milk. We, we do it for beef. And, yeah. And and selling and then for our family as well, but also had a garden, and then we had just had a lot of room for us to play around. So that's where I grew up, riding yeah. dirt bikes, quads, doing all those things, and then running in the backyard. It was just yard work, and doing that was like everything. Yeah, all the time, and it didn't do it all the time. Yeah, but it, it was all the time for my so dad. So you was living that country life in Oregon for real, for real. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was fun, uh, and it was just different. You know, yeah. a lot of my friends like there's no neighborhood friends. You yeah, know, we lived on the dirt road. So, like, when you got to get and you got to run down this dirt road if you want to even <laughs> see somebody else that's yeah. close to you. So, uh, didn't live close to my friends. And you always had to drive at least five miles, 10 miles just to get to their house. So, wow. So, it wasn't like I was just walking down the street and then getting yeah. somebody else's house. So, living on farm was a little really different yeah for sure. but do you take some of that growing up on the farm do you put that into today's life when you're like chilling at the house do you find yourself doing things that you used to do on the farm like um, do you do you shop a certain way now because you say okay that's not a good beef cow right there we got to get this dairy <laughs> but are no. you like an expert in this in this in the meat industry right now <laughs> no no not not at all i definitely say the work ethic is yeah, what i take absolutely from the farm. um Obviously, I would love to live on a farm post career. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm kind of in between going back and forth from apartments to apartments yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So I, I don't even see field, which is weird. So, um, but the work ethic is where I really took from from my dad's upbringing and stuff, uh, and my mom as well. Like being able to be raised on a farm it has so many different things to it. Yeah. You know, and I tell the story of uh, one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me, and it sucks that you're on a farm when you're a kid. But I was 15 years old. I uh, had my permit, so I yeah. couldn't drive yet. So my dad actually ended up picking me up from uh, football practice. Um, it was probably middle of the week. Yeah. Uh, it was my freshman year of high school, um, and I failed a math test. And so my dad, uh -oh. my dad has my my login, so he could see my he could yeah. see my grades. You so, wasn't escaping that. He was seeing what was going on. Oh no, he saw my grades. Yeah. So he saw that he saw that I had failed math test, and I didn't know. Yeah. So you know, I finished a football practice. My dad's picking me up, and I'm so excited. You know, I'm talking about football practice, and man, my dad's quiet the whole ride home. It's like 20 minute drive all the way to get home. That quiet just means the ass will be coming. That's when that quiet is. That means ass will be coming. That poly culture, if your dad exactly. don't say nothing. You, you. Oh, we know. That was a sign. I was like, hey, how was your day? And he didn't answer. You was like, oh, I'm getting my ass whooped yeah, immediately. Hide all the flip flops. Yeah. Hide all the flip flops. Yeah, so you definitely. knew something was up. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. definitely. So when we get home, so the way my house works, you get on the dirt road, you ride yeah. down. And then so my house is in front, and the barn is all the way in the round back. So there's two ways. So I, you, we always drive, we drive to the front every day. Yeah. And you didn't drive to the front. We didn't drive to the front this day. Oh, no. And so, <laughs> and so we drove around back, and we get to the barn, and I'm like, like what, what are we doing here? <laughs> and, you went to ass whooping land is where you go. And I, and I changed back into my school clothes yeah. after football practice. So I had jeans on. I had shoes and everything. And I don't have no country, no yeah. country attire. You know what I mean? And so my dad's like, you fed that math test to that saw. He said, clean the barn. Yeah. Pitch black. I got it, a, there's a light in the barn. We didn't turn it on. He Pitch made you clean it in the dark. Yeah, with all my stuff on, normal, like wheelbarrow, yeah. shovel, Ooh. dirty. I couldn't see. I couldn't smell. Like, you can smell everything. I'll tell you that. He, he was like, oh, that <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, that's, that's doo doo. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, exactly. So yeah. I had to go through that. And so, it's funny. So, that actually was. I don't think I ever failed a math test after that. Like, hey, lesson, hey, lesson learned. And so that, but that was like, that's what yeah. country life. That's yeah. what like, growing up on a farm would really teach you those work ethics of like, if you don't want to do the bad stuff, like make sure you get it all ahead of, on, on time. So your uh, dad was on point. Yeah. He, so he <laughs> took like the tongue and culture and said, okay, how can I put it into this farm life? Okay, yeah. he gonna clean the barn in the dark. Yeah. And that just shows you, like, you know, any Polynesian fathers that are out there, they're either going to whoop your ass or they're going to teach you a lesson in a way that you'll never forget. And yeah. this obviously was one of those lessons <laughs> that you yeah. was never going to, I'm never going to touch shit again or none of that. <laughs> so then you never failed a math test after that, obviously. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, we had a, we had a, 
a great tractor yeah. that could have cleaned the barn. Oh, yeah, no, but you was the tractor. And, and I used the tractor after that because I passed on my math test. <laughs> but during that time, I had to use the shovel. And oh, I'm real man. Out of there, so, yeah, no, it was definitely a... a See? Case. Come on, that was a life <laughs> lesson right there. Kerry, Terry, take that, take that into the football career that you started. You said you started going to football practice. What was, after seeing those kids practice at the end of the cul-de-sac, was that something that said, okay, when school starts up and I can do into organized football, what was your first taste of organized football, putting the pads on, putting the helmet on? Oh, uh, man, it was just a... Uh, it was a scary feeling, yeah. actually. You know, I loved it all. You know, you'd love it when you got pads on. That's yeah. why. That's why the seven on seven culture that you know that they have right now is so big. It's because Huge. It's, it's different. You know, yeah. when you put the pads on, it's a whole different beast. You know, and so for me, it was like, oh, I love what I do. I love what I do. But man, when I first walked out, I still remember that feeling of like yeah. anxiousness, that scary. Like, what oh, is yeah. what of having pads on? Like, I ain't never tackled nobody before. How old were you uh, when you first started playing organized football? Third grade. Yeah. So I either. I want to say nine or ten, eight. See, I think that's a good age because yeah. now nowadays they have leagues where they're starting about five five years old. Oh no! no I, like, I think personally that's way too young. I, I think you can scare a kid out of actually wanting to play football down the line. But eight or nine, nine, ten, I think that's a good age. And I would even I even push it up even just yeah. A little oh yeah, 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 yeah. just a little more. Personally. Like I yeah. think for me it worked. Yeah. But even if I would go back, maybe like a little bit later, just yeah. you know starting and stuff. But it was a scary feeling, and you know it's funny because it still plays into. Your, your experiences in college and NFL. Yeah. Like, and I tell this to people all the time. I've never got nervous for a football game. Not one time. Yeah. Like, like never. Like, you, you go all the way back, never one time. But I'll get nervous before every practice. But for the, but the games, you good. Games, I'm good. But practice, but tell us why that transition was so like, okay, in practice, I'm a little nervous. But yeah. in the game, it's going to make it do what it do. Yeah, it's just for me, I love the preparation part of it. Yeah. But I'm so detailed on it. It has to be perfect. Yeah. So it's like, even if I mess it up, I, at least I mess it up in practice so I can perfect it. But Come I'm on, still, T. But tell I'm, the kids that because a lot of these kids these days, they're trying to skip the practice part and go straight to the games. Oh, uh, no. Nah, they me, need it's that. like the off season now. And yeah. even when I was a kid, like practice was the most important part. It was like, it was the key to being able to go out there and play the game yeah. freely on, on Fridays for me when I was growing up and Saturdays and now Sundays. So, That's dope. Because you use that practice as to get all the nervousness out there because mm -hmm. when it did come to game day, all you had to do was perform what you'd have yeah. been practicing already. No doubt. <laughs> See, <laughs> when did you start noticing you were actually good, though? Because now you now you got the, okay, I'm a little anxious. Now when was the when was the light bulb go off and say, I'm pretty good at this? Well, it was different because I never thought, I didn't know what side of the ball. So I was actually a two-way player. Yeah. So I, you know, I played offense and I played defense. And I didn't know which side I was better at yet. Yeah. Because I remember when I, when I first started like that, that time in third grade, I didn't like to be touched. So, so he was like, as long as I get, out, get away from everybody, I'm good. So it was like, give me the ball and I'm not going to let anybody yeah. touch me. So that's why I score all the time. Yeah. And then as I, as I got through high school or middle school, you know, I started to play a little bit more defense. Yeah. And I got to be a little bit more aggressive and, and start tackling. And then freshman year hit, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be receiver. And, yeah. And like, mind you, I was a running back and, and linebacker growing up. Yeah. So I thought I was going to be receiver DB, hands down. Skills position, all, Skills, all of them. Yeah. yeah. And I got there my freshman year and I played – Two games, and then the third game they put me in, and they moved me to quarterback. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> you just went all the way back to quarterback. So this is the main position now. Well, no, yeah, so it was wild. So, like, yeah. like, and this was during, like, that August, you know. It's called, I don't know what you call it, high school, but training camp. Yeah. That's where I – and this is my freshman year. So, I was, a, I was a DB and a receiver. Well, they threw you in the fire. And so, I actually remember I was running a route one time, and I caught the ball one hand. Still remember. Yeah. So one hand, it was deep. It was a, it was a seven route over the right. I still remember it was over my, uh, I think it was over my left. Yeah. I still remember it was my right hand kick. Yeah. But when I threw the ball back, spiral. Oh, that's when all the coaches were like, hold up. He <laughs> he was. So I'm throw the ball throw it again, T. Throw it again. Said, What's going on here? Yeah. So that's, that's the next thing you know, I'm trying out for quarterback. Wow. And, and so, that's normally how coaches do it. Like once you catch the ball and say, oh, throw the ball back, they kind of say, oh, that was a tight spiral. So they seen the spiral come from you. They was like, okay, maybe let's let's try you out at quarterback. <laughs> and how was that experience? Like, was that something that you were like, okay, I could do this too? It changed. It changed everything. Like, yeah. it changed my mindset. Like, man, will I play quarterback in college yeah. now? And because I ended up getting offered for for quarterback wow. to certain colleges too. Yeah. So it was like, I didn't know which side I really liked. Because like, you know, eighth grade, you see kind of like the I'm, I'm better. Yeah. I, I, this is why I, tr I transferred high school. I transferred schools going into my high school because I'm like, I want to play this sport. Yeah. You know, as long as I can. So that's where I kind of would say, oh, I'm starting to get a little bit better. But yeah. I, when I got to freshman year and I started playing quarterback, I really didn't think I was meant for it. Yeah. Because my quarterback was not there. Like, my quarterback experience was like <laughs> freshman year throwing interceptions, not winning games, you know. And I'm But playing. that just added to your arsenal as being a quarterback. Now you're seeing everything. 
Now you're seeing yep. what the receiver is supposed to do, yep. what the lineman is supposed to do. Now your perspective is different. Mm-hmm. Now you're learning the game and knowing the game in a whole different avenue. And now that kind of helps you going mm-hmm. forward. Like when, when you said, okay, I can start doing this quarterback thing. And when did that end? Uh, you know, and probably beginning of my sophomore year. Yeah. Because mind you, I was playing varsity as a freshman too. Wow. So this is like, Come on, baller. This is like fresh, <laughs> freshman year varsity. Yeah. And I'm nervous. Like, Woo! what's going on? Come and on, then, G. And then, as a freshman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so going into my sophomore year, and it was just like, I got to be better. Yeah. You know, and so that's where I took, you know, playing a little bit more quarterback seriously. Yeah. Like, okay, this might be the more of the position I'm going to play. And then I made a couple plays on defense. Like, I, I mind you, I might have played. So you're still but, going both ways at this point? No, because I when it, once they moved me quarterback, I never played defense. Yeah. They that. was like, no, no, keep your ass at the quarterback. But I was like, I need some plays on defense because yeah. that's where I think I'm going to play in college. Ah. That's where I wanted to play. So you knew this, just knowing your body and knowing what your mindset was. That, hey, let me make a couple of plays on defense because that might be where I go for college. Yeah. Man, come on. But, but you I was only, ahead of the curve already. But I only played maybe 35 snaps total the whole year at defense. Wow. But I made probably, in those 35 snaps, I probably made 15 plays. Yeah. And those 15 plays was good enough to put on a highlight. <laughs> so then I was like, made okay, that. This, this will help. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So like, that's, and so I ended up finishing my sophomore year. And instead of going the quarterback mm-hmm. route, we decided to label myself as an athlete. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, At so. that point, you just an athlete. And that was the biggest thing that helped me in my yeah. recruiting process because I, like, when coaches asked me, what do you want to play? I said, I'm open to whatever. Like, special teams. Come too. on. And you don't get that all the time because when they come to recruit you, they want to say, oh, well, what do you want to play in college? When you say anywhere, you mean anywhere. And that means the athlete aspect is kind of say, okay, put me anywhere on the yeah. field, coach, because <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah. And so then that's why, you know, even football, my dad would always push for other sports too. So basketball. Yeah track and so it really helped balance that name of an athlete Ooh. it wasn't just like oh you're not only an athlete in football no yeah. it was like athlete all sports all around yeah so it kind of helped because that's my dad never believed in just strictly one training yeah he'd make sure you got to diversify everything because it's going to help you for those skills in football right on pops because yeah. pops <laughs> knew that those little things and you know a little bit from basketball a little bit from other sports is going to help you in the mm-hmm. long run do what you do so now 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 you got the colleges after you yeah. Now you so did you win any uh, state championships while you were in high school? Nah. Oh, okay, cool. Nah. I was about to... <laughs> I See, it's not easy to say nah because now you don't win no championships. Now you got to get the recruiters, and now you got to sell them because yeah. they kind of got film on you. But now it's a matter of saying, okay, who's going to take me for what I do? Mm-hmm. So tell us about how that recruitment process went for you going to college. Uh, it was difficult at first. Yeah. You know, the freshman year, like I said, like playing quarterback, it switched my whole perspective of yeah. where I thought I was going to get slotted at, and, and kind of in those ways. And I still remember, like, that's where my big transition of this is what I want to do. Like, I wrote, I want to be in the NFL my whole life. Yeah. Like, fourth grade, wrote it down on school projects. Still yeah. remember. But it wasn't in that till that freshman year when I didn't get an offer from a college. It, like, broke me down. Yeah. And I still remember crying in my dad's arms and everything. Yeah. Like, my mom right there trying to, like, just encourage Console me. Console you. Yeah, yeah. So this will be all right. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't even that they were consoling me. It was more or less, like... What are you gonna do about it? Yeah, you know, like you know, are you gonna are we gonna sit here and, yeah. and cry the whole time, or are we gonna put it work in? And so that's where that next step going into my sophomore year yeah. is where me and my dad really made the big push of okay, in order to get recruited and go down this path, like we got to start working different. Yeah. So my dad started. I couldn't drive. Like I was still. I think I probably started driving because my sophomore year, yeah, uh, going into it, he started driving me to the gym. Yeah. And so the gym opened at four forty-five. Oof! Come on, kids. So we got to put that work in. So we woke up every day at 420. Yeah. Yeah. Like Man. 415, 420. And my uh, my dad would drive me to the gym. But it's funny because my dad, my, <laughs> my parents also took my phone away. Yeah. <laughs> Especially down the line in my junior and senior year. So yeah. they'd always take it away at 9 o'clock. It was a distraction. Yeah. So yeah. like it was, uh, so <laughs> I wouldn't even have an alarm. So my dad had to really wake so up. He was, the pops was the alarm. Like my dad was my, would come and wake me up. Yeah. And so like. As much as everybody's like, man, what do I kind of like? You got to be self disciplined, but I'm very grateful for the support I had with yeah. my family. Cause like without them, I want to be where I'm at. Come on, man. And so um, we made that decision. And so next thing you know, 4 45, we'd be in the gym. Yeah. And uh, every day we just, you know, stack them bricks and, and continue to get to it. And so that's where I saw my, my sophomore year. I got my first offer yeah. uh, to the University of Utah. And I'm still tripping off that, T, because we're talking freshman, sophomore year. Normally in a normal high school career, <laughs> that's frost soft. 
that's like JV. You're already on the varsity field. You're already putting in the work that juniors and seniors are already putting in at that point. Mm -hmm. So now you're already a step ahead. Now it's like, okay, sophomore year, junior year. Now it's starting to get serious. Mm -hmm. Now it's now you're starting to you know get, get crafting your game, starting to get master your game. Now where you say okay. Now I got to start seeing what college I'm going to go to and what my path is going to be. Because now sophomore and junior year starts. What are we at there? Well, we can kind of reel back to the stories I just told about the Chargers. Yeah. And USC. Woo. So It all uh, intertwines. Yeah, yep. And so, I, you know, I, I couldn't go to school with the Chargers. So, yeah. you know, USC was kind of in the in the big picture of where I wanted to go. Yeah. I told my brother this is my dream school. And my brother went to Oregon State. He played yeah. football there. Uh, Oregon State is my hometown. You yeah. Know, essentially. Yeah. Uh, I just never wanted to go there. I wanted yeah. to get out of the state. I wanted to go somewhere warm. I was tired of rain. And so when I went through the recruiting process, it was like I got to take my – I made sure I took all five officials. Yeah. Because it was like I got to make sure I see everything. All the visits, yeah. yeah make so, sure you, you know, see what everyone was offering. Yeah. I visited Michigan, mm -hmm. Nebraska, Utah. I even went to Alabama. Yeah. Went and, go, and I got to see truly everything. And so wow. getting those – all those different identities of culture and the programs and – we're talking about like night and day differences. We're talking about SEC to Pac-10 to Pac-12 now, but you're you're kind of just weighing out the options at that point. Yeah. What did you see like in Alabama and SECs and these other divisions that you're like, ah, USC's still the school though? Um, you know, every 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 team is different. Obviously, um, the SEC was it was a, it was a big football factory. Yeah. It was strictly what am I gonna do on the field? And yeah. That was it. In in my opinion, you know. And yeah. No, and absolutely. Everybody's opinion has, and I yeah. and I'm blessed because I I, I also. I also graduated from USC, so yeah. now I can come talk, on. I can talk about other schools <laughs> and, and be proud of my. Well, you my a alumni. USC graduate, yeah. yeah. So uh, going to USC and taking that visit changed my mind. Yeah. Like, like made sure it didn't really change my mind. It, it made the, my point clear. It solidified it at that it point. Solidified yeah. where I wanted to go. It was the warm weather. It was the degree. It was the magnitude of how much the degree held. Yeah. Um, and but that was already ahead of the curve anyway, because of what well, pops was cheering for the Chargers in USC. So that was already the for the, 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 the forefront. Well. Once my dad uh, got a little bit older, uh, with my brother going to Oregon State, yeah. he, I don't remember him really talking about USC like that. Yeah. So really, I just held it in from when I was young. So I've always been a USC fan, but my dad moved to Oregon State because he he because your brother was there and he lives in Corvallis, yeah. you know. So it's like that's everybody what everybody talks about is yeah. Oregon State. So that's why me going to USC was really a weird. It's not like I went to Oregon, the, yeah. the you know the other crosstown rival. Yeah, the Ducks. I, I went I went out of state and went to a team that. You know, Oregon State didn't like when they came into town. You know, but that all, I always always say that in that decision, it's all. And I always tell the people all the time, it's always good. You never want to leave home, but you mm -hmm. never know when you leave home what else is out there. Mm -hmm. So I think for you to make that decision to say, okay, I'm gonna leave Corvallis, I'm gonna leave the Oregon State and Oregon mantra, and go to the, step outside the box and go to USC. That was something mm -hmm. that you wanted to do. I think a lot of these kids they get complacent by staying home. Oh, I can just go to the local school or yeah. local thing. Something that you stepped outside the box and said, nah. I'm not going to do the Oregon State thing. I'm not going to do Oregon. I'm going to go do this USC thing. Like, how would that decision on you? Was that something that was in you? So I got to get about at the home field. Yeah, no, for me, the biggest thing that helped was when I would go out in, in Corvallis, and I'm, I'm a high school kid. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm big time or anything. Yeah, but yeah, when, yeah. I, when I walk out, you know, people, I'd, I'd run into somebody I knew. Yeah. And next thing you know, it might not even be anything. It, it might, it might not even be a small thing. town, it's a, it's too. It's a small town. Yeah. It's like, oh, I know you. Next thing you know, 15, 20 minutes goes by. You're talking to them, you're wrapping it up. And then you're leaving, you go home, That's and that's time. Yeah. That's time is ticking. And so when I went to, and I was like, I wanted to get out of the state because I didn't want anybody to know me. Come on. So when I went to USC, I was, I had my, I had my blinders on and I was ready to go. And now so, you're more focused. Now you ain't got to yeah. stop every five minutes talking to the local homeboy, some homegirl that's over there. Now mm -hmm. you're just focused on what you're there to do. Yeah. So how did that decision, did you have like a signing day? Did you have a day where you had hats in front of you and you had to pick the hat? Well, actually, I made a commitment video. Okay. And so I went, I went that route uh, just because I had a, a, a bunch of great friends that yeah. were into making edits and, and making videos. You had the homies that was doing the videographer and all yeah. that. Yeah, okay. And so it was like something I was like, <laughs> let's just do a video. And so I actually signed on signing, the early signing day. Yeah. Nobody knew. I, I said I was going to make my signing like public. Yeah. I think it was December 28th or something like that. Uh, so it was once everybody came into town for Christmas, I had all my family and my yeah. friends and we all went out to eat. And that's where I played the video. Uh, oh, so everyone. some of the family and friends didn't even know what you was, where you were committed to. Only, only my immediate family knew. My, yeah. my mom, my dad, my grandma, my nice. brother. That's the only people that knew about Wait, it. mom and grandma knew? Everybody knew. That's okay. <laughs> you say they was the only ones that knew, but oh, mom and grandma knew? Everybody knew. So, <laughs> <Bloody hell. laughs> so now that everybody knew, now, now it's USC. Now it's like, I, yeah. I, I'm going to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. Like, how does that transition from coming to Oregon, stepping to, because they're a powerhouse, of course. Mm -hmm. 
coming in there, was there any pressure saying, okay, I got to go perform and do what I got to do if I want to be on the field at such a young age? Because you're a true freshman now. You know, I'm oblivious to a lot of things. Yeah. Um, football wise, like, I, I, and I'm, I get to really have these conversations with you. This is pretty cool. Like, my, my senior year of high school, I watched, I watched college football, I watched USC, but yeah. I was so focused on my dreams, my, my, my goals of A, because I would write some lofty goals my yeah. senior year, like my junior and senior year of like football. It yeah. was lofty stuff. So I never really got time to watch the NFL. Well, elaborate on that, because this is something that I think kids watching this need to know. Like, yeah, you could be watching, you know, the national championship. You could be watching the Pac-12 championship, but you're over there focusing on what the task at hand was. Mm -hmm. you're, you're junior, senior year, you're kind of writing down your goals, like, you're, and you're checking them off one by one. Mm -hmm. That helped you tremendously, right? Yeah. So is that, is that some advice that you see the kids watch this right now? Write out your goals in those junior and senior years. Stop messing around and start stop doing what everybody else is doing. Yeah, like I and and I'm and I put this on everything. Yeah. Like I, I would not lie and and on this because this is truly this is what got me here. Yeah. Um, I would write. I still remember like my when I turned seventeen, I wrote seventeen goals down. Yeah. And I I, I achieved all of them but one. What was that one? And, and one was a character one. Yeah. And so that's what's crazy about it. You know, I would write some lofty ones like, you know, I want it to be the opening. I want to go to the opening, which is the high school camp at the time. Yeah. I wanted to be invited to the Army All-American game, got checked them off. But one of them was 10 touchdowns in a game. Yeah. Because the previous year I had scored eight touchdowns against our rival team. And so that was one thing. That whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. In a game? <laughs> hold up. Hold up, T. Hold up. Yeah. Back it up. Back it up. Your goal, so you scored eight touchdowns again. This is in a game. My junior year. Junior year. And your goal was for your senior to score 10 in the game? Well, against them. Yeah, my cross time rival. <laughs> now you're just showing off. Now you yeah, because we're talking about 10. People don't score in a whole career eight touchdowns, let alone in the game. <laughs> so now you just want to step up from that. Did you reach that 10 touchdowns? No, because this is where I learned about my character. Ooh, talk about it, T. <laughs> uh, the previous week before we played my rival team, yeah. I actually got ejected from a high school game. <sighs> right before halftime. Yeah, and in in terms of the, and back in those rules, we still fight it for pledging of like okay the two quarter four quarter rule like yeah. you, you still get ejected but you can be back the next week, uh, but they denied my appeal, oh, and so man. I tried because I got ejected for taunting and yelling and that's where it checked myself yeah because I had all of those all of those goals checked, checked yeah check and it gets down to that one I just all I needed was ten touchdowns against my rival team, and the next game was I think it was week four it was against our rival team and that was the one you wanted to do the ten touchdowns in yeah. Stop and right there. I, and because I couldn't play in it, though. See how God works, though? Yeah. <laughs> you was going down the list so it was, it was, it was too quick. You was doing it. Yep. Sometimes God puts those obstacles in your way to say, okay, you're kind of doing this. It's too easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> Let me put this little obstacle in the way. Let me put this little you know, uh, gear in the road for you to kind of slow down and say, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. That's something, had, like you said, it humbled you. To be like, wait, I, I can't be messing up a game before my rival game. Now I'm suspended. Now this box is unchecked. Now, now, now it's it's getting serious. Yeah. Now because because that has to carry over into another goal going into college. Yeah, it was just, it was eye opening. And yeah, it was, it was shocking, and it really appreciated the, my relationship with the Lord even yeah. more. You know, because that's where you know you start scoring eight touchdowns. You know how hey, how big can your head? Ooh, get? Come on, you know, it's like my parents were right there next to me, like. Just taking the needle and trying to pop it. You yeah, know, it's just like a balloon. It just needs to get it oh, all yeah. out. And so that's where I, I had that great support. Yeah, I had the great family. Cause now I'm like, when my goals aren't achieving, I'm I have to sit back and be like, why aren't they? Achieving? Yeah, absolutely. And then am I writing the goal down that's wrong? And now now it's like goals that are even bigger. You know, you you writing stuff that's truly impossible to achieve. Yeah. But that's that's the point of something because you really want to do the impossible. Come on. And so. But back then, that was something where everybody was looking at me crazy. Like, yeah. 10 touchdowns in the game against high school? Like, that's not like yeah. that's not realistic. But you see like, me just look at you like, hold up. But that's it was a realistic goal for you. Yeah. And that was the thing. Like, it sounds outlandish to some that may be like, oh, but you knew what your your, 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 your skill set was. Mm -hmm. You knew you was able to do that. You did eight, eight touchdowns a year before. I knew what I was doing outside of football yeah. to prepare for those moments. Because, like, when I say I'm not lying about these things, like, I'd be on the field doing back pillars at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. Wow. Random times. Like, and I'm not saying that was every day. But yeah, that, yeah. that was random times just to train my brain to see, you know, what what can I do that nobody else want to do right now? Exactly. Like, I know everybody sleep or they party. Yeah. And I'd be at the gym at 4.45 after a game yeah. just because – it wasn't even that I was even working out. Let's 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 make yeah. this clear. <laughs> Let me look at this camera right now and make this clear. Sometimes I wasn't even doing a great workout. Yeah. But my mentors was really helping me get confident in terms of ain't nobody else doing yeah. what I'm doing right now. And so that's where I'm like, okay, if I got that just a little advantage in my head, it's gonna it's gonna carry a long but way. Where'd that come from though? 
You don't, I mean, I know growing up, but that had, what's, what influenced that as far as inspiration wise? Like, there's somebody, was there an athlete that was doing that? Say, okay, let me try to take a little bit from each athlete and kind of put it into my own way. Like, something had to spark that mindset. You know, it's a mix. You know, it, I wouldn't necessarily say it was an athlete. You know, I was around my family a lot yeah. and my parents. Um, that was the motivation. It, it was the motivation. Yeah. Um, my dad just watching him work, watching my mom work as well. Like, it really put everything out there of what, I wanted, yeah, to, yeah, of what I wanted to do. You know, and at a young age, I think I naturally had it too. I, yeah. I was gifted from God. Like, I was always competitive. Yeah. Even like first, second grade, if I if I messed up, like, it's just like, I, I wanted to, like we said, like, I wanted to be perfect. And yeah. So like, that was my natural competitor in me. Uh, to go out there, and so that's when I, when it transitions to high school. Like I would do those crazy yeah. things, just because I wanted to be the best. I, I never on. wanted to lose in a race, but did I lose? Yes. Did yeah. I, was I ever the fastest? No. Like, and parents yeah. need to see that too, because when you're that kid and you want to win in red light, green light, when you were a kid, mm -hmm. th there's something special about you. Yeah. So that when you knew that at an early age, and your parents start seeing that, they're like, okay, this is not just an ordinary athlete, it's not your ordinary kid, because you do start to say, okay, he has a God gifted talent. He's doing things and making moves that not is out of the ordinary. Now you're looking at going, okay, I can't do 10 touchdowns in the game. I go down these things. How did, going back to your list, how did that carry over when you didn't play your rival team? What did you say, okay, I'm just going to leave that box open now? And that's the hardest thing that hit me. Yeah. That was like when you check those things off, that's where I checked my character. Because I'm like, if I didn't make those mistakes in the previous game, but you know they all add up because that's not that, that mistake that happened in the game wasn't just in that moment. Yeah. That's a that's a – Testament to my character throughout the last offseason, yeah. probably. And that's like my whole sophomore, junior year offseason. That's where it's like my junior year offseason. That's like, it, in my in my opinion, all those things, it's a trickle-down effect of something that happened larger yeah. back, back when it started. And Absolutely. You, you, you would never know. Yeah. And so when you have those things just repeatedly happen, that's when it, it's that big moment of burst. And next thing you know, you're ejected. Yeah. And it's like, but it wasn't just in that moment. It was starting to feel yourself a little bit too Everything much. Everything came on you yeah. once you knew. Once you got ejected, you're like, man. Yeah. Now it just kind of it just puts you in the back seat to be like, wait, what, do we, what, what what's going on? Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes you stop and say, okay, wait, what, what is something? Is something I didn't do? Is something <laughs> like when I hit him, you stood over him? Or did, was there something that, that that you didn't know you was going to do that happened that kind of put a halt to what your goals were? Yeah. It made you stronger and hungrier. If I if I'm thinking that like that, yeah, and uh, you know, I still check myself through college too. Yeah, you know, and even today's game, like you know, I have those you know moments of mm -hmm. you know being on top of where you want to like you know, football is such a violent game. Yeah. Uh, in order to be violent, and for me, it was always a strategic uh, part of it. Was you know my going into college, I talked a lot. Yeah, and it wasn't a lot of good stuff. You know, it was it was always talking crap. And it was a trash things. talk. It was trash talk. Come yeah. on. So uh, for me, it was just doing those things. It helped my game. Yeah, but it wasn't the person I am off the field though. Yeah, you know, I was I always try to. Hold myself to because it's, it's always different characters. Like you could be a dog on the field and be that respectable person off the field. Like mm -hmm. there's there's kind of night and day for me. But when you went to USC, you, would you go to USC as a safety? Uh yeah yeah. So so you already knew as a safety that you're going to USC, predominantly a prestigious college. Now you have the comparisons going on now. Now it's like you're looking at USC where Junior say I went as a as a linebacker. Now Troy Polamalu's in the mix. Yeah. Now we're trying to say okay, I'm a freshman at USC. What do I got to do to make me the best safety at USC? What goal sheet? What 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 are you right now then that's helping you out throughout your college career? Uh, well, when we go back to how why I didn't watch too much of like oh NFL, yeah yeah go back to the, yes when we watched I didn't watch too much of NFL yeah. Pac-12 and all you, those you're focused. So when I signed, I didn't know who the safeties were at USC. Yeah, respectfully, like yeah, they, yeah. these are my dogs. You know now that like these are the guys that I played with. But, but at the moment, but at the moment, like I didn't truly like when I signed the papers because I wanted to go to USC yeah. regardless of who the talent was there, regardless of who was coaching, like. Because coaches come and go, players come and go. And normally that that's something that you look into before you sign. Yeah. What safeties are there? Am I going to start when I get there? Yeah. What coaches are there? Am I going to like them when I go there? So that was not even a factor into what you was doing. You was like, I'm signing to USC. I don't care what coaches. I don't care what players. Not, I mean, respectfully. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to go there and make my mark. Well, my family always told me you never sign for a coach. Yeah. You know, it's never signed to a school because of a coach. You know, you sign yeah. because you really want to go there. And if you, never, if you got hurt, would you still want to be there? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, USC, if I got hurt, is, and I did get hurt while I was there, warm weather, yeah. I could walk the class still, you know, and I still got the power of the degree to yeah. network and do all those things. So that's why I, I looked on paper, it was like, man, this is where I got to go. Yeah. Um, coach was great, players were great, but I still found myself, I early enrolled, so I graduated high school early. Uh, midway through my senior year, I graduated high yeah. school uh, and, and enrolled, and I saw myself on the depth chart fish string. Wow. Yeah. So you're like, hold up. Yeah. A scientist now in fifth string? Yeah. So now you was like, okay, now 
it, th your task is ahead of you. Yeah. I'm fifth string. Now I got to make my way up. That's definitely on the goal sheet now, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not going to be fifth string <laughs> when I'm done with this. No, it was wild. Like, I'm, I still remember getting there, and my goals were all messed up. Yeah. Like, it was like my eyes open to what a college experience Man. was. Like, you know, you go to, you're go you going to these – um, the first day of class, so I was three weeks late because I graduated high school early, but yeah. my semester ended at a different time. So I remember going into to, to college, and I'm three weeks late. And three weeks late in a, in a college Come semester, on, that stacks up. It's, it's hard like, yeah. to catch up. And I was 17 years old. Man. And so I'm trying to catch up, and I had no time to really experience everything, yeah. but I was like, everything was on my shoulders uh, academically. Yeah. And so that's where I'm like, man, I'm not. Because you're behind the eight ball already. You're three weeks late. I went there for football. I got school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so next thing you know, I'm, I'm seeing myself in the academic yeah. part of it and, and just, just fighting, but fighting in a good way where yeah. I still end up with a good GPA and everything. But my football wasn't where it yeah. needed to be. Because you're focusing on the academics was, at that was, point. Yeah. I was focusing just to, just to survive because yeah. I was so late. And so now I, I go into spring ball. You know, I finished spring ball and, and I'm still fistering. Yeah. You know, I go into training camp, and I finish training camp, I'm still fist strength. Yeah. And I find myself a little heavier. I was almost 225 at a as a safety. He was a linebacker then. As, 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 as a linebacker. <laughs> You're a rover position that, at that point, yeah. And so my coaches, that's where it's like, okay, first guy, second guy, third guy, fourth guy, they're definitely better than the fifth guy, and that was me. Yeah. So it was just like, okay, will I ever see the field? But I knew I was going to see the field at special teams. Yeah. And I wrote those goals down. I was like, I wanted to play my whole freshman year at special teams. Yeah, and I knew there was great players and great safeties ahead of me, but I still had my trust in myself to. to and get as a out freshman, that that's hole. your opportunity. Special teams yeah. is always the opportunity to kind of show, mm -hmm. okay, who's this kid that's hitting everybody head on? So, yeah. special teams was the goal. Yeah. Put me on special team, coach. Just go, I'll be fish string. Put me on special teams. <laughs> Let me make my mark there. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I still tell them to this day, I was like, I, I, can, I can do everything you ask. Remember, yeah. I was I've recruited as an athlete, so you put me anywhere, I'm going to yeah. do it. So, uh, then I saw myself on the fish string, and that's where I started to be like, okay. Let's see what we can do. And by the grace of God, I had so many different things in so many different ways. Like you would never have saw, thought I would ever see the field in my yeah. career there yeah. because of the players that were ahead of me. Uh, but things, things move. Guys got hurt. Guys yeah. got in trouble. Guys transferred. And next thing you know, I saw myself by week four, my freshman year, I started. I was starting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. By week four. By week four, you already so, – so you went from fifth string, special teams – at linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now you worked your way up into the starting lineup mm -hmm. in, by week four. Yeah. So once you get a taste of starting at USC, you don't ever want to go back down the uh, depth no. chart. Yeah. So tell us about how you was like, okay, now that I'm in this starting position, I'm never going to go down this depth chart unless it's barring injury, of course. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that's what happened. Um, yeah. I, I started five games from week four to week uh, eight. Um, in those five games, you know, I, I accumulated like 50 something tackles yeah. as a true freshman. And that's hard for a safety because you're not really. Yeah. But really, I was a linebacker. So yeah. <laughs> let's not forget that. Exactly. Um, but, you know, I, I broke my collarbone. Yeah. And that's where it hit me. I'm like, you know, you could be right back down to that fifth string. Yeah. And I was, I was really proving myself as a, as a starter, you know, as a, as a freshman. And so that's where they kind of, you know, believed in me. Um, but it's but another I, setback. But it's a setback. Yeah. And so I broke my collarbone uh, freshman year, uh, week eight. Against Arizona State, last play of the game. Still wow. Remember. Yeah. And so uh, going throughout that recovery process, it was tough on my mentals. But, yeah. you know, still, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to fully recover. Yeah. Uh, but this is what happened in spring ball. About five months later, uh, took a fall, landed on the same collarbone, broke it again. Oh, come on. And this is sophomore year. This is going into my sophomore year spring <sighs> ball. Yeah. So two, two collarbone broken and within the span of five months. Wow. Yeah. Come on. Now, now you're set back. It's setting you up almost for like the major comeback. Yeah. Because now it's like, look, you don't broke your collarbone twice. You don't get a third one. Then you don't, then your collarbone's yeah, yeah, not yeah. good no more. Yeah. Tell us how that was just kind of like the, the 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 motivation for you to say, okay, look, if I if I get hurt again, I may not ever see the field again at this point, right? Well, I got hurt again. Oh uh, shit. Well, cause so I actually ended up getting the, the surgery after the second collarbone break. Yeah. So my, my my collarbone is metal. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of crazy because I actually was like, I don't think I'll ever play again. That, the motivation was tough. Well, yeah, it's tough on your mental like, as well, too. Because, like, as a safety, what do you do? You hit the whole time. It's yeah. not like I'm going over there and I'm just patty cake. Like, exactly. you're hitting with the shoulder. And so I was like, ah, I might not be able to, to hit again. Yeah. And, and four months later, I see myself in training camp playing already. Yeah. After a, a whole surgery. Wow. And, and I'm like, four months, this, it, it was wild. And so I go throughout that season. I know because my collarbone was so strong, mm -hmm. my shoulder was so weak. Oh, because you got you got a brand new collarbone. It's all and you, metal. We still got the old shoulder, and it's all metal. Oh man! So, so the shoulder, shoulder took the brunt of everything. So when I hit my shoulder, I tore my shoulder, <sighs> uh, tore my labrum, and everything. Yeah. Uh, dislocated it, and so for me, I had an option right there. I could either finish the season right then and there and get mm -hmm. the surgery, 
or I could finish the season, uh, obviously through pain. Yeah, and through, to play through your with, with a brace. pain threshold. And I was like, I'll get the I'll get the surgery. After. Wow, let me finish the season. So I, I played, you know, the rest of the season in pain, uh, in pain with with a with a uh, a brace on, and it was Damn. able to to finish. And then I got the surgery. So that's where I'm like, okay, three like two surgeries, but three injuries on all the right yeah. shoulder. I'm well, like, hold up, T. You still playing in these games with a, a new collarbone, a messed up shoulder. The people behind you was like, hold up. <laughs> what about us? <laughs> when are we going to get our shot? Yeah. Like, cause, So you're still playing at a high level, of course. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's recruits coming in every year. There's someone always there to try to take your position. Mm -hmm. For you to kind of keep your starting position when you have hungry others, your safeties behind you, you know, teammates, that say, okay, T's down. Maybe it's my opportunity. You were still making your mark on the field. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why you, you, you make your mark on the field is because all the things you do off the field. Yeah. You know, I'm a true believer. I've never smoked. I've never yeah. drank. Uh, that's stuff that I just never, you know, was into. Yeah. Um, and so I did. I try to do everything right off the field. Yeah. And so when I went into these games and, and preparation through the week of practice, I just knew I was prepared more than others. Yeah. You know, except for that. You know that early enrollee. Yeah. I was I was strictly student, and I wasn't a lot of wasn't a lot of ball. But you know when I put in those perspectives, yeah. you know, I try to do everything right. You know, so. Um, I mean, the cards was definitely stacked against you just going into USC. Mm -hmm. Now you're here dealing with injury. You're in your sophomore year, going into your junior year. Now it's starting to get serious because now you got only two more years in your college life, of course. But now you're starting to say, okay, now I can get done with these injuries. What's the next step as far as saying, okay, are, are you looking towards the NFL at this point? Or are you kind of saying, let me just worry about this junior year at, at USC first? Uh, you know, I told my family and my family, we actually came up with a plan. You know, that's why I actually graduated early at college yeah. uh, because when we got there, my, my first initial instinct was we're going to go three and out. Yeah. You know, I wrote it all down. Even I was fifth string. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm still going three and out, yo. Like That was on the goal list. That three years and I'm out. Wrote it down. Yeah. And so we made a plan and everything. You know, my brother helped me execute it, my mom, my dad, everybody. Um, but when you look at it, that's where it got the, – the, the cards just kept getting yeah. stacked differently. Yeah. You know, I, I ended up getting that surgery after the season and COVID hit. Mm. And so the COVID hit, I went that's back. That's right. I went back home and I didn't have, and I had just got the surgery, so I need, I need rehab. Yeah. You know, as, as an injured athlete, you know, you need rehab and stuff. And I actually didn't have those people at my house. Yeah. Like, I couldn't be, I didn't go in every day. Yeah, because it, it, it was social distancing at that point. So you, so you had to do it all on your own? Yeah, so I ended up deciding to go back to L.A. Yeah. Uh, and going back there and had to go one-on-one. -on -one. But it was after a while, like, my, my shoulder was really locked up. Yeah. And so I was like, dang, this is different with my shoulder. It's not how it used to be. Yeah. And so I was like, dang, are we really going to be able to do this? Like, well, you had to adjust your body and your mind to what you were dealing with at that point. Yeah, I was like, is it three and out really realist yeah. realistic? And, you know, I was 225 as a freshman and going into sophomore year, and then COVID hit, and I lost a lot of weight. Yeah. You know, mind you, now I'm playing at 205. Okay. 202 and, and yeah. seeing high school and college games like that, and I've never seen that weight yeah. for a minute. And so um, I was thinking, will I really, you know, play in the league after three years and everything? And so – uh, by the grace of God, like I was able to go into my junior year and have a have a um, a good season. Yeah, you know that was able to spark my the NFL talk. Yeah, and, and at that point I had already graduated, and that's when I decided to move to move on to the next level. See, that's what I'm talking about. But yeah. see, but then at that junior year, now you're starting to draw the comparisons yeah. to the <laughs> Troy Polamalu's and true, to the USC safeties. Mm -hmm. When did that aspect of your life? Hook it up with Troy. How did that whole tie in to what you just already been through for these last two years? Now your junior year. I'm assuming you've already had the comparisons yep. going in there. Tell us about that. Uh, you know, I was fortunate. I've, I met Troy uh, through Vice Akahema. Oh, legend. Uh, legend, yeah. yeah. So Vice Akahema, I was at the Polynesian Bowl yeah. uh, in 2017. Um, actually, it might have been 2018 at the time, but, you know, at, at that time early on. Um, and he was like, man, Vi was like, who do you model your game after? And yeah. I was like, you know, I, as much as I, I watch, yeah. As much as I can, you know, I love Troy because, you know, he's a safety. Yeah. I'm going to USC. I'm from Oregon. And that's exactly how Troy is from Oregon, went to yeah. USC, play safety. And so that's when he was like, let's put you in contact. And so those conversations were, you know, crazy. Yeah. You're like, hold up, I don't play with me. You really going to get me in <laughs> contact like, with him? Like you like you really going to hook me up? Yeah. And next thing I still remember getting on the phone with Troy, you know, and it was just like shell shock. Yeah. Like, this dude's really telling me what to do, talking to me and, and like really put a plan together. Yeah. And so like. Obviously, I did those things right in college, but the things that he had added on top to it, it was beyond, yeah. you know, football. Yeah. Because I still remember texting him. The first time I ever texted him. Yeah, tell us after. how that went. Like, that had a – you couldn't just, like, text him and be like, hey, Troy, it's me. But now it's like you got the conversation piece going. Tell us how that, even, like, how that went. Yeah, I still, I still remember. I texted him, and mm -hmm. I said, what can, what can I do to be a better safety? Yeah. And he texted me back, and he said, we got to work on your character first. Not even the game. 
Yeah. The character. And that's when we wow. got that's when we got on the phone and we put a we put a plan together. Yeah. You know, and and for me, he he one of the biggest things he had told me was uh, you got to get rid of social media for all of college. And so for, hold up, hold up, Troy, <laughs> hold up, Troy. <laughs> Troy was like, you got to get rid of social media. And you're a kid in college at USC. Yeah. That's like, I mean, when you get down to the character issues, you didn't even did that come out of left field for you? Like, hold up. Ooh, I didn't even, I didn't see that coming. Oh, not at all. Like, yeah. it was like beyond, you know, especially as a kid, you know, branding and stuff. You're going to USC, the biggest Huge. media, LA yeah. and everything. So I was like, oh, I was so excited uh, to build my, build my Instagram. Yeah. And do the Snapchat, do the Twitter. Um, and, it, you know, for him, it was like, you know, those things will take care of itself when you get to the league. Wow. When you get down the line. That's when natural branding will happen. But he, for me, he wanted to see how disciplined I would be. Yeah. He wanted to see if you could do it. If I could do yeah. it. Yeah. And, and he, I don't think he actually didn't know I really did it until I until I told him I did it. Like I I deleted Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. So all he that. just kind of told you, hey, do this, and then you know holler back at me when when all that's done. So yeah. he didn't even know you did that because that's a four year journey. Yeah, you know what I mean that's not like a one year and then I see you. And yeah, he wasn't gonna keep tabs in. on you. He was like, you either do it or you don't. A month check in. I still remember I lost a lot of friends from it because my my early enrollee freshman year. Yeah, you know I'm 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 stacked with all the schoolwork. Not being able to talk to my friends because I got rid of social media. Man. And a bunch of friends didn't like that I didn't have social media. So it was like I didn't talk to them anymore. I could just and imagine. So like, oh, T think he's too good for social media. But they didn't know that base is behind it. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I didn't tell nobody. I just, I just went and did it. And so, you know, I see myself three years later not even logging in once. Yeah. It changed your perspective wow. on how you see and go about your life. Did it, was, it help you, though? Oh, yeah it, was, yeah. it was wild. It was like, I don't think I would have been, like you said, you're going through all those those moments, those big Come moments on. in college, I don't think I would have been where I was yeah. if it wasn't for that. Because I think that would have been a huge distraction, and I think Troy mm -hmm. kind of knew that. Yeah. And I think Troy, being you know the legend he is, kind of said, look, if you can get rid of these distractions now, like he said, it's all going to play mm -hmm. out once you get to where you need to be. Yeah. But... Come on, as a kid, I mean, I'm just being devil's advocate. If I'm a kid and I'm at USC and Troy hits me and tells me no social media, I'm I'm going to negotiate. Maybe that's just me. I mean, maybe just IG, maybe I can keep the Facebook. But you actually went and did it. <laughs> yeah. There was no negotiation. You wasn't like say, okay, I'll keep Snapchat and just get rid of these two. You got rid of everything. Yeah, and I still remember because I still I was at an airport. I think when it happened, and yeah. um, got on the app after, right after the call. I got on the app, and I was like, dang. You sat there for a little bit though, T. Oh, right? I sat there for a second. I was like, "Am I really doing this?" Yeah. And I'm like, you know, when you have a Hall of Famer talking to you, Come and on. telling you what to do at the position that you love, yeah, um, safety and doing everything. I was like, why would I not listen to him? Yeah. And I remember he told me that, and I was like, I looked at the looked at that. You hold it down just a little bit, delete, delete. Wow. By that time, I deleted everything, and uh, it was tough. Yeah. It was tough. Like I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and be like, man, that first three weeks was tough. That three months was tough. And then after that, it was like, I can do this. You a better man than me. My burner, I would have had three three or four burner accounts. <laughs> <laughs> they would have had Joseph C. Balls. Who's that? It's me. That's, that's my other account. But you did your thing <laughs> yeah. and kind of stuck to what Troy was saying. Because like I said, you you said it yourself. This is coming from somebody that's at the pinnacle of what you already doing. Mm -hmm. So for him to say that it carried it carried a lot of weight. Yeah. And just to kind of see how humble Troy is and kind of say, once he found out that you did that, what was his reaction? Well, that's when I wanted him to train me after yeah. I uh, declared for the draft. Uh, I had that conversation with him, and I'm like, hey, Troy, you mind if I, uh, you know, if you train me? Uh, you know, I did those things that you told me. You know, I did X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then plus, I, 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 st I stayed off social media. And I still remember I, he was kind of like off the phone, like, and I think it was like, I don't know, this might be in my imagination, but I still remember him, like, I still remember his his wife Theodore was there, and I still remember him like, hey, why, hey, Theodore, I think he actually did it. Like, <laughs> he listened to me, like, he was like, hey, check, check it, check. like, he, he was fact checking look, at that let's point. Go look at his Instagram, yeah. did he post? I don't think he posted. What was the last post? Like, because like, it was weird, because I remember getting on social media after, and it yeah. was like. I never heard of no stuff. Like it was like random stuff. Because now it's new to you again. It was like new. It was like new things that had happened yeah. that I had never seen. Like and and it was all because of those things. But when I when I had asked Troy, he was like, "Dang, he really did that." Yeah. And that's when he's like, "If somebody's willing enough to do those things, like come on, you know, I'll train him." So he ended up training me. Oh. Um, and and it's not every day that you him. get somebody like Troy to train you. No, oh, no. Nah, you nah. got to make these steps. Like he's like Bruce Lee. You got to do these steps, and then you get to get what he was doing for you. Then that had to be like your. So I mean, your, your kind of confirmation at that point is said, look, I did the steps you asked me to do. And then you would kind of see who's going to follow through with it. Mm -hmm. So how that training go? Uh, the training was different. You know, yeah. it was amazing. Uh, first and foremost, like it's it's the mind first. Mm -hmm. It's the body. It's the, the preparation, the sleep, the hydration, the yeah. diet. Like it, it's all those things before you get to training. Yeah. And so we did all those things. Then you start training. We don't lift weights. Yeah. 
Wow. And it's like you do a bunch of body lifting things where and body body movement things, uh, plyometrics and different things. You're using your own body weight. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and different machines, isokinetic stuff, but it's all based on quick reaction, you know, and, and, and I'm not here to tell everybody like what. what yeah, yeah, doing, absolutely. Know? Just lifting was very yeah. slow and methodical. <laughs> yeah. Squats of slow and methodical. Like why can't we train fast to train? Because that's how you're going to play in the game. Yeah. And so uh, switching to that and going through Troy was like, night and day yeah it was like wow my body feels great wow i have all this shoulder mobility that come on i didn't have when i yeah. had those surgeries and i and I, I started getting back to the to the old me and yeah that's where i felt like okay this is crazy and i and i, and I put a new version of myself out there that yeah. i've never seen before and that's crazy because now that you got the training from troy now you're you're going into the draft you're getting this draft so what's your expectations at that point to say okay look i'm training with troy not a lot of people might not know what I went through to get to this point. Not the whole story, of mm -hmm. course, but now you have like the people that are at the draft kind of just dissecting you and going, oh, well, you know, he has a bad collarbone and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. When did you say, okay, now I've got another goal list. Yeah. These are the teams that I would like to go to, but now it's just a matter of whoever picks me, I'm going to go perform to whoever is going to take this shot on me. Yeah. Um, ran 4 6. Yeah. Surgeries. Um, and as that for safety, it doesn't really help you in your draft stuff. Yeah. So uh, definitely drop me. And low, but for me, I didn't care where yeah. I was gonna go. I thought fifth round was perfect, and and as going through all those things, you know, it's a process. Yeah, you know, everybody, it's the biggest thing that you think at that moment. Yeah, uh, and I played in two NFC championships, so I know what really big. Yeah, you know, it's way bigger than Come the on. combine and the, yeah. and pro day and all those things. Um, but I had a feeling uh, yeah. that the Niners were gonna choose me just because the Niners were the first people to contact me. Yeah, when I when I was uh, eligible to be able to, for the draft, and so to me, it was kind of like, hey, this team. Yeah, you know, they kind of hit me kind of early, and so um, I was able to go there, and that was just like all those things that I had put those build the, the bricks and, yeah. and build them step by step, and then next you know I'm I'm getting drafted to a team that I I used to wear those shirts growing up. Before we get mm -hmm. into the, the draft, actual the actual one they drafted you from a from a fan's point of view, when we're watching who we're gonna draft, and also yeah. you know just me being a fan, I'm just thinking okay. A lot of us were like saying, oh, well, we, you know, as polys too, oh, what about that poly kid from USC? Uh -huh. He'd be dope at safety, you know. And this is me and my brothers talking the way we talk about drafts and just kind of see it all play out when, you know, the first round went, second round went. It was like, okay, you get the gems like in the fourth, fifth, and sixth, like in those late ones. When they drafted you, of course, as Polynesians, we're like, oh, let's go get our Talanoa jerseys yeah. ready. Yeah. But to know that you were going to be a part of the team, that was kind of like, wow. Like, how did that, because for you to say, I was thinking fourth or fifth round, a lot of people are not going to think that. They're going to have the draft party day one and kind of think, okay, oh, well, I didn't get drafted today. Now I get drafted day two. You kind of already, like you said, you did before and what your family kind of set up for you, you guys kind of knew where you was going to go. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what helped you kind of say, okay, if whoever takes this and with the Niners getting you early, we'll say, hey, look, we're going to go do what we do for the Niners. Mm -hmm. How'd that phone call go on draft day when they did draft you? Uh, it was a special moment, you know. First, I was I was around my family, yeah. you know, and I and I was I had a draft party, but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily like we knew I was going on the first day. Yeah. It was just to get everybody together, yeah. You know, and this is a big moment in my life, and I'm not always home. So mm -hmm. when I was home, it was like you tell me three days of being able to be together, yeah. And then once I, once I hit that thing, it's you know, NFL life starts. And Come it's on, a different, it's a different breed. So uh, being able to spend those time with my family was special. Uh, a lot of sitting around, yeah. lot, a lot of talking, a lot of just communicating with my family, uh, and then the phone call hit. Yeah, you know, and I still remember picking it up, and you know, you got John Lynch and Coach Kyle uh, being able to talk. Yeah, and that was just something I'm like, man, this is surreal. Like, yeah, you know, breaking down emotions. Come on. Um, but it was special. It was a truly special moment for for not just me but my family for yeah. sure. When you do get drafted, you do get that phone call. Having the support system that you have, and you know, being so close with moms and pops like that, was that the first thing could come to your head right when you got drafted? Was looking at your parents and saying, "It paid off," like something yeah. to sit there and say, "Moms, we did it." You know, was that the moment after you get off the phone with them, kind of looking at your family? Because you, like you said, for three days, you just want your support system there. They're all there, but it kind of comes all full circle. All the hard work you mm -hmm. guys did in Oregon and in, in USC and you know Corvallis and all that now is coming to full circle where you just sitting. Damn, I really just got drafted by the 49ers. <laughs> yeah, no, like, wow, man. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I, it's, it's tough to explain because, yeah. you know, I turn around and I see my mom after I'm, I'm looking at the TV like, man, I'm not going to get my name called today. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. I get the call and I turn around. And it's just like yeah. tears Come running on. down. You know, you know, we made it in a sense of this is, you know, was my dream yeah. was to to hear my name called. Uh, but in no, no sense are we even accomplished of, what we want to what we want to get done uh so that's where it was like 
we didn't make it yet. Yeah. But we we made it farther than we. Well, we closed expected. that chapter because, yep. like I said, life's a chapter. Now that chapter's closed. Yeah. Now the chapter of the NFL begins. Yep. Now it's like okay. Now I'm, I'm a 49er. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of like okay, you, you was already wearing the shirts when you was younger. Mm -hmm. Now you start to come into this NFL lifestyle. Is that transition a huge transition from college, high school? Of, of course it is. But for you as a kid, saying okay, now I'm transitioning to this. 49er lifestyle, this NFL lifestyle. Tell me how that even was something for you to go through. Um, very different. Yeah. And, and, and this is, is a, it's a weird way to describe it. Uh, it's the hardest and easiest thing you could do. Yeah. First thought, the hardest thing is you're going against the best in the world. You're talking about the best of the best. You're going to go against guys like George Kittle every day. Yeah. Uh, Debo Samuels, Brandon Ayu, yeah. Christian McCaffrey. Like those are guys that you Sheesh. go against every day. Yeah. But the easiest thing is, you don't have to worry about school now. Yeah. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. You you are strictly football 24-7. Your body is is everything. Yeah. You're taking care of it, your massages, you're doing those things. And so that was the biggest, you know, blessing of my life is yeah. like, man, I, I I graduated. I don't have to worry about my degree. I can go into these meetings. I can fully focus on what I want to accomplish, fully focus on the game plan this week. Uh, and it still took me time to still learn and, yeah. and get ahead of the curve. But then, like, that's the hardest thing is going against – you know, a Tyreek Hill. Yeah. You know, guys like that, the fastest guys in the league. Cause that's that was my first my first preseason game was against Kansas City. Oh wow. And I still So you already got that taste early. And I still remember like this is a cool, like this was my welcome to the rookie moment. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm playing uh, a cover three version and I'm lined up in the box and they just they jet they jet uh Tyreek Hill. Come on. And he's the coming, cheetah. He's coming right to me, the cheetah. And I still remember he gives me a, a just a little step. Yeah. And I and I bit and I had to turn around. And I had to take the angle, but when he stepped, he said, "Gotcha, mid play, <laughs> mid play." Like I ain't. Never, you heard that? You were like, "Oh, he just he talking to me?" <laughs> I was like, "I ain't never heard." Not one person has ever talked to me mid play before. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm standing on this dude with the Pro Bowl, and I'm like, "Dog, I can't believe you talked to me like that. That's crazy." <laughs> but he he legit like juked me and said, "Gotcha," and I'm like running. And I'm like, "Is this what the league?" And this is my first preseason yeah. game. Like. Get By the time you go to adjust, he's gone. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I'm like, I ain't never seen this world class yeah. speed before, you know. And you got Patrick Mahomes lining up behind him. This is my first preseason. Yeah, game. and I'm like, this is real. Like, man, you just got through right amongst the dogs right away. Yeah, yeah. And so that that to me was the the craziest part of, of transitioning into the NFL because it was nothing like college. Yeah, you know, college will prepare you as much as they can, but you get to the league, it's a different beast. But like you sure. said, it's 24 seven football. Now you're working yeah. just strictly on your body, yeah. strictly on what what you got to do as an athlete. Now you don't got to worry about the school and everything else. Now that you're into the moment and then you're going through these, you know, welcome to the NFL moments with Tyreek Hill, when are you kind of like kind of pu pushed into the starting position, kind of say, okay, wait, now, now I could be a starter for the Niners and I started getting more. Like how did that process go about? Because you, you, you're stacked, the cards are stacked against you again. Because mm -hmm. now, now what were you on the depth chart when you came in as a rookie? Uh, well, I was backup, so, you know, in, in, a, in a NFL life. It's like, yeah, two or three. They, yeah, it's two or three. Yeah. Um, and for me, like it was like three when I first got there. Yeah. Second, once I made the 53 man roster, uh, and then I was fortunate enough to start three games in the middle of the season. Uh, yeah. Seven, eight, and nine, um, and I was able to start those games and kind of get that experience. And I was able to go in there and not and not do great, but put some good stuff on film. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where kind of leveraged what I could do. You know, I was an average special teamer. Um, yeah. Was able to just go out there, and that was a, a goal of mine was to be a Pro Bowl special teams guy. Yeah. Um, but for me, it just got to continue to just to, to work, you know, and, and I still I split some time with the starting safety yeah. uh, towards the back end. Uh, but I had really great leadership that was able to really take me in and yeah. and, and help me. Guys like Jimmy Ward, Jaquasi Tart, yeah. Tavon, Tavon Wilson. Um, those are guys that really like were right next to me yeah. and continue to help me build every day. Um, but it wasn't really until then. it was those were the, the things I could build on. But it wasn't until my second year where yeah. I could start. Speaking of, come on, when you said he, I was waiting for you to get to this point, second year. <laughs> now, this is a year. Yeah. So we're talking about the second year where this is, I mean, you don't know it at the time, this is your Pro Bowl season. Mm -hmm. And you being only in the second year, like I said, some rookies hit the rookie wall, some are going to excel. And in this second season, a lot, of, a lot of cards, again, were stacked against you because, you know, you got a quarterback situation, you got stuff that's going on with the team. When, Because the defense started looking nice. And then you started getting some big plays. And I remember the inter interception against the Rams mm -hmm. when you took it to the, I was like, I said, oh, he, he's here. He's mm -hmm. here now. Like, are those the moments that kind of said, okay, we can do this? Because you kind of see the talent around you just mm -hmm. kind of forming from there. Tell us about how this team was special than the first-year team because now you're in a position to help full-time. Yeah. Um, 
being on the field and going against the guys truly yeah. it was it was amazing you know guys are just built different too yeah. you know and and that's what we took to practice every day yeah and it was like if i'm not going 100 what are we what are we doing here yeah. why, why are we wasting our time and so these practices got real got real chippy got real competitive yeah to the point where it's like you catch a ball on me like i'm getting in trouble you yeah. you drop the ball and we make a play there and like it was down to the wire and so that's what made this season so special because yeah. we were able to go and do things that guys weren't doing every single week yeah you know i mean and, and we still got things that we got to work on and yeah. i got things that i got to work on and clean up our eyes and stuff and but that's just what football is about you yeah. know it's that preparation each and every day you got to bring it every day if you want to sustain a long lasting career yeah. in, in the nfl through the season when you did get the call that you made the pro bowl how was that feeling uh it was <laughs> like it, it was something that we you know we work for yeah you know, and, and was that on the goal list yeah yeah <laughs> come on t yes sir <laughs> it was so uh, you were able to check that one off yeah yeah, yeah. And, so, and now you know you had the nfc championship again mm -hmm. i mean you see and when i say this we talk about we're talking about two years in the league two nfc championship games yeah. not a lot of people that go in the league do that so for you to already be in that thing you're just waiting for the next step because this year we of course we came up short against philadelphia now you know we taste it against the rams too are you wait? Are you waiting to check that box off to say, look, we are Super Bowl appearance and then Super Bowl champions? That's obviously at the top of the list. What preparation are you? What are you taking from this year that can say we could carry into next year? Because it's not easy when everything in an NFL team salary cap players, you know, have signing elsewhere, and you know, you try to gel with people, and all of a sudden you got two or three key pieces missing. How do you kind of transition to say, okay, look, we got to keep our core guys together and still got to do what we got to do. We were just right there two years in a row. Mm -hmm. You as your part, what do you tell your teammates? Look, because you have to deal with these cards that are being stacked against you again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's consistency every day. Come um, on. It's a it's a long road. Yeah. You know, it's a, we, we, we talk about it. It's a 12-round fight. Yeah. You know, and, you know, round one is beginning right now, and you got to continue to check those things off each and every week. Yeah. Um, the goal is always, as should be for every team, uh, is a Super Bowl, yeah. you know, and that's that's the ultimate. So it's not like I'm, I can sit up here and say, "Hey, I want to win five. I want to win." Seven, yeah, I absolutely. Want, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna put those numbers out there because you know you just gotta win one every year. Yeah, you know that's that's the goal. You're you want to be in that spot every year as much as you can. And so for us, it's just gotta be consistent, taking care of your body, the things off the field will help yeah. you on the things on the field. So, and now that you're in your second year, and we're doing talking about Pro Bowl, you got to tell us about when you was. Gifting the kukui nuts to the to your teammates. Mm -hmm. Tell us a story about that because I started seeing you know Fred wear one. You had a uh, Greenlaw wearing one. How did that come about? Was that something that you just wanted to implement into your team defense? Yeah, you know I'm big on the Polynesian culture. Yeah, you know with the, it's a vibe. You know first and foremost, you know the culture is is, is truly you know special. Yeah, um, you know I have a lovely uh, photographer and Miss Kim. Shout out Kim, man. Yeah, That's family Kim, right there. Yeah. So she had the idea because they back in 2019. Before I was there, yeah, uh, they had done chains, you know, victory yeah, yeah, chain, yeah, the victory you know, chains. And they've been giving those things out, and so for how much I've been bringing the heritage and the Polynesian culture to the team, yeah, uh, we thought it would be special to uh, to do the kakui nuts. And so for me, I wouldn't say anything that I took it. Yeah, it was lovely, Miss Kim, that you know, brought the idea. And yeah, we, you know, we worked together to make it happen after every game. Uh, I think towards the middle of the season. Yeah. So, so who was the first one that got the first? Who's the first recipient of the kakui nuts? It was me actually at Chargers, <laughs> <laughs> and then after that it was, it was yeah. everybody else. I don't know. I had to get. She had gave it to me, so yeah. that was the first time the the Kukui nuts. She had give it to me first, and then after that, uh, I was able to. She handed it to me. I was able to give it to everybody. And now yeah. we get to today, and we talk about the culture, and we talk about um, your position now. Like we talked about how you came from, you know, where you came in Oregon. Now we'd be in a second year, the Forty Nine er Pro Bowler. But now it, I take it to the culture because, you know, of course, it's no it's no secret that my Western Conference podcast, a lot of Polynesians watch it and a lot of Polynesians, you know, kind of go through it. And we talk about the culture, you bringing the T's to the game mm -hmm. and you playing against other teammates and they're throwing the S's up. And tell us mm -hmm. how that camaraderie and that brotherhood amongst other Polynesian football players after games kind of goes about how you guys when you see Jordan Mailata and you see a lot mm -hmm. of these other guys. How does that conversation go with do you guys know each other already? Do you guys kind of like first time meeting each other? How mm -hmm. does that culture thing kind of tie in? Yeah, you know, some of them were, you know, first time meeting people. Yeah. Uh, but very fortunate. Some guys that, I, you know, I've just watched for so long that I'm just like, I can't believe I'm on the same field as yeah. you. Uh, you know, and it's just it's special. It's truly something that it brings us together. It's the culture uh, and watching guys like Frankie Louvu that, you know, throwing up the S's. And uh, shout out Frankie Louvu, yeah, man. He had a balling season this yeah. year. And yeah. so, you know, being able to see guys like that and Juju and Tua yeah. and my guy, 
Isaac Samalu, he plays for the Philadelphia yeah, Eagles. Yeah, old lineman. Uh, offensive lineman. Uh, I actually grew up with him. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I want to say I grew up with him because he's a lot older than yeah. I am. But <laughs> see, I, I, see how he threw you under the bus? <laughs> sorry, Ice. My bad. But I grew up with his brother, uh, and his brother was a year older than me. Yeah. And so I got to grow up with them. But it's crazy to be on the same field as a guy like yeah. that, you know. And so seeing those those special moments, but not only just for a family friend, but the culture friend. Yes. So uh, that was something that was, you know, we really appreciate when we're out there. Speaking of culture, see Tua and all the rest of the guys, we take us back to the 49er organization, Uncle Jesse. Mm -hmm. Jesse Sapolu, you know, and he's been a legend for years and someone that I've talked to a lot about, you know, 49er football. And when you came about, he was like, hey, your rookie year, I remember he, we had a conversation on the sideline. He was not like sideline, you know, I get my sideline passes, but I was talking to him on the sideline. He was like, You got to watch out for this kid. Yeah. Tyler is going to be a problem. And it's from Uncle Jesse. Mm -hmm. And tell me how he kind of helped you through the organization as being kind of like that, you know, uh, matriarch. You know, he got mm -hmm. rings. So, oh, <laughs> got a lot of them. Fill up the fingers. Yeah, tell uh, us how that relationship came about and how it is now. Crazy. Uh, got drafted. Yeah. And he was one of the first people to call. Wow. Yeah. And it was like, I'm like, dang, like, how you get my number so yeah. fast? Like, who gave you my number and how you got it? And this dude, he he, he really, you know, appreciates game, but yeah. he also appreciates the culture within the game. Yeah. So uh, being able to have him by my side and, and, and support, you know, he's there every, like, I'm talking, we text every week. Yeah. And it's like, not even every week, there's a couple of days, you know, a couple of days within the week. Yeah. You know, so like, he's always on top and, and sharing stories uh, and sharing moments of what, you know, is appreciative of the game. Yeah. You know, there's there's wins, there's losses, there's trials, there's tribulations, yeah. there's triumphs, like there, there's everything, there's wins and everything. It's just, but that's what football is all about and it's the, the special part about it. You yeah. know, and, and when you got a culture that's behind you, a uh, culture that's respective, you know, and, and for us as a, as a young generation, you know, you have to respect the higher, you know, the history of the yeah. generation, the, the historical aspect to it. Like guys that paved the way. Yeah. For us to be here is the only reason why we're here. Come you on. Know? Guy like Uncle Jesse, a guy like Troy, a guy like Junior, rest in peace. Like yeah. these are guys that that really made the game what it is Paved for, the, way. for yeah. the Polynesian culture. You know, and I think we're one of the top, I wanna say, in, in the NFL per capita yeah. of, of of players, you know, we're we're represented in a in a good light. Yeah. But, you know, what can we do to take the next step? You know, and, and those are the guys that helped us, and we just got to continue to do the best we can. Did you uh, meet Jesse when you did the Polynesian um, uh, football game in Hawaii? Long, I believe so, but yeah. I was I was young at the time. Yeah, so it was kind of like in passing. It was kind of just yeah, you kind of knew who he was, but then yeah, it kind of came yeah. <laughs> a full round. Like, oh, I know who Uncle oh. Jesse is once you got drafted by the Niners. Yeah, <laughs> and we talk about you know Uncle Jesse and Junior Seau and all these legends in the game that kind of paved the way for you guys being the younger generation. I think a lot of the kids now that are kind of watching you, you know, playing football, you know, the youth playing football, you know, not just Polynesians, just in general, but the Polynesians and, you know, more, more so look at you representing your culture. Look at you throwing up the T's, looking at Frankie and throwing up the S and stuff like that too, Juju and everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when they see your story right now, when they see your play, when you see your checklist of things, when they see you preparing for practice, I think that's what I always want to get out to the younger generation that watches these podcasts to kind of say, look, I can do these things that Tyler Noah did and kind of put my own spin on it. Mm -hmm. Because like what you did, you added to just what, what Pops was raising you on, kind of did what you had to do. And not a lot of people take that route. In this generation, and I call it the social media age, it's harder for you, for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's harder because everyone needs that instant gratification. Everyone needs that kind of like confirmation from social media, which I think is bullshit, but that's besides <laughs> the point. How do you handle social media now after being off of it for so long because to kind of stay true to Troy's word, now that you're an athlete and now that you're in the public eye, is it harder to t maintain it now than it was before you didn't even have it? Uh, you know, it's different. Yeah. Um, you know, it's branding. You get paid for deals. You get yeah. paid for things. Uh, you know, there's definitely times where I check myself and, and I got people around me that check myself. Um, of like, oh, you might be on your phone a little bit too much. Yeah. You know, get off of it. Why are you on your phone all the time? So it's like I got the people around me. That's why you got to you gotta make sure your circle is correct. Yeah, the support system got to be big. System yeah. Because you could be doing these things and you would never know because you're so in tune. You try to be in tune with what everybody else is yeah. doing. They don't know. You don't really remember what you, you're doing yeah. by yourself, and so that's that's just surrounding yourself with great people because that's who are also going to help you. Because in no way that you know, not every like if you go look at our team, not one person got there by themselves. Yeah, you know. Come on. And so for me, I you know I'm put in this position for the people that are around me. And yeah. So um, having those voices and those opinions that help uh, critique myself and help hold me to a higher standard, um, 
that's the way you're going to be successful for as long as you can. So it's crazy. Before we headed over here, before I came to pick you up to come do the podcast, I had seen this thing on social media of Troy, and he was talking about when um, when he was younger, he had tackled this kid and said "f you." You know what I mean? Yeah, watch that. <laughs> and and I was tripping because I haven't I've never seen that clip. And um, when I seen that, it, it brought me back to what you were talking about, the humility. Mm -hmm. And when he was saying, you know, he said F you to the kid, he went to tell his brothers, oh yeah, I hit this kid, and I said F you. And the brothers kind of like checked him like, that's not cool. Like, you know, that wasn't it. <laughs> and that goes back to the support system. And, I, and that's something that I, I'm, I'm really a proud of in, our, in the culture, the Polynesian culture, because yeah, you could have the brothers that could steer another way, be like, hell yeah. But Troy kind of had those brothers that kind of say, nah, that ain't cool. And you had the support system to say, okay, you didn't check that one box when you didn't get that 10 touchdowns but you still check the box that got you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the reason I, I appreciate you coming here is because I think people need to see this story. You have only the, you know, the, what you came from, what you grew up from, and I appreciate what you represent in the culture. Throwing the tees, I like it. Matza from Comic Kings, when we went to see you after the game, you know, throwing up the tees, and me and him are like, oh yeah, we're Samoan. We're like, oh, tees for Thomas Samoan. <laughs> shout out Matza. Shout out Matza, shout out to Comic Kings, but man, we just want to thank you for coming on the Western Conference Podcast, man, and being who you are. Because still to this day, I think the kids watching this, you're, you're a hero to them. And I know that that's not hard for you to hear because that's not a lot of pressure that I want to put on you. But I think these kids watch you. You know, you're, you're on the limelight. And I think you, you hold yourself to a standard that these kids can be proud of. And I want to just thank you for doing what you do, man, and coming here. But look, I'm telling y'all. Me being a Niner fan, you will see this dude hoist up a Super Bowl trophy soon and hopefully sooner <laughs> than later because it seems like you do a lot of things. But with that said, is there anything you're going to say to the kids that's watching this right now? Big T's and all that, you know, strive to be your best and put God first. Come on, man. Talano <laughs> Hufunga right here on the Western Conference Podcast. You will see on the next one. We got Troy and Jesse and them coming in, but I wanted to get this one in here, man. Thank uh -huh. you, my brother. Appreciate it. Come you, on, my man. Guy. Thank you guys so much. Western Conference Podcast. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.